as Maggie said, I'm going to be talking about two new GitHub Actions that we're building to better integrate Data Hub into your existing workflows on GitHub. So the first is let's talk about change management with DBT. So, you know, one of the big problems that people run into is DBT world lives totally different from, you know, your business analyst world of Looker and Superset and, you know, your other BI tools and everything downstream of it. And so the analytics engineers who are, you know, making tweaks to the DBT models often don't actually know what they're impacting downstream. Now, Data Hub already brings that transparency with all of the, the N10 lineage the capabilities that we have. But it requires right now that the analytics engineers do this extra step of going into Data Hub and looking at that information. So what if we could put that information into context when they're making the changes directly? And so that's what I, I wanted to demo first. So I'll switch over to this repo. So over here, I have an example change that you know, I might be making. We have this like, you know, I have an active customer LTV model. And, you know, I realized maybe that the average purchase amount was in a super useful column. And so I'm planning on deprecating it and deleting it. Uh, and this sort of, these sorts of changes happen all the time, whether it's, you know, removing columns or changing the types or changing the definitions. It's important to understand who is using this, this, this model downstream. And so as soon as I create this PR, we'll give it a, like a minute to run, run through CI. And then it will post a comment on the PR with exactly what this impacts. Um, and so we'll, we'll let it run. Now, why is this, this important? Well, it's important because now the the workflow is integrated into the place where analytics engineers already work right like dbt your source of truth for dbt is already in git which means that you want to put this information where uh where where those folks are actually like you know looking so that they don't have to do that extra step all right so we'll we'll let this run um I guess we'll, if it's going to take a little bit, we'll just pull up a, an example. So in this example, we made a change where we like renamed a column from breed to pet breed. And we can see here that it posted an impact analysis where it said one DBT model change that impacts 110 downstreams, mostly in Looker. And there's all these different charts and dashboards that rely on this table. And so maybe based on this information, I should say, okay, actually it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to, to rename this column or I should, you know, alias it and duplicate the column first and then slowly deprecate it over time or, you know, handle the change more effectively. Whereas, you know, in that original PR with that other table, we can see only one thing depends on active customer LTV. And so we can, you know, we can just take a look at this definition, figure out if it is safe to change or just change this, this thing in lockstep. All right. Um, now the other piece of the, of the puzzle that I wanted to talk about today is the business glossary. And so this is once again about change management and kind of embracing the ideology of shift left. And you know what is shift left? It's it's all about moving the the metadata annotations and all of this other information about your data assets to live alongside your data assets. And often the definitions for those things live in Git. And so Git is the place to to put that metadata as well. Uh, and the benefit of, of, of shift left is that governance is no longer something that is like an afterthought. It kind of is embedded alongside the remainder of your, your processes around data. 
Um, and this way you can have, um, so to that end, we built a data hub already has a business glossary, which basically serves as a, a central data vocabulary for all of your terms and definitions um, that are, you know, sometimes like, you know, very specific to your organization and actually require quite a bit of discussion around the changes of them. Um, if you've, if you've had, you know, these, these complex networks of docs and spreadsheets, which define what exactly an active customer is and what exactly, you know, revenue means and what exactly does, you know, churn define, uh, how exactly does your company define churn? Business glossary kind of handles those concerns. Um, now, a lot of folks want to define the business glossary in Git because um, that way they can they can put it in version control. It lives alongside their data assets. They can have more deep discussions about what is happening, what changes they're making, what changes you're making to that to the business glossary, and so forth. And so we have a YAML format for defining the business glossary, which then can be ingested into Data Hub. The issue is as soon as you do that, if then you make changes in the UI, the, the file and the UI will get out of sync. And so often whenever you do a YAML based business glossary, you have to disallow edits to the glossary through the UI, which produces like a, uh, like a subpar experience. So that's why we're introducing a GitHub action that enables bi-directional sync for the business glossary. And what does that look like? So let's pop over to this one. So in this, in this example, I have a business glossary defined in my demo repo called glossary.yaml. And I also have this loaded up into data hub. And, you know, let's say I want to make some modifications. So I want to add a term to this classification called PII. And we can like apply some descriptions. And then we can create that. And then maybe I also want to say um, the sensitive tag inherits from PII. Great. So now my glossary file is out of sync, right? It doesn't reflect the edits that I've made through the UI. And so what I can do is I can pop over to the actions tab here and I can run this workflow. Now, normally what you would do is you wouldn't manually trigger this workflow. You would instead have it kind of like run daily or every, something like that. And that way, you know, you can continuously integrate changes from your glossary into or from, from the data UI into your glossary. And then you would also have something where every time a, a commit is merged to this repo, you automatically sync the glossary back into data hub. And that way these two things will never get out of sync. Um, all right. And so, you know, this thing is running and then it'll take a little bit, so we'll, Oh, wait, all right. And so now it created a PR titled update business glossary. And if we pop over here, we can see the new PII tag was added to our glossary file. And then in the sensitive data term, it now inherits from classification.pii, which was where, where we had it here, classification PII. And that way, these two files will never get out of sync. All right. So if you are itching to use this, um, the, oops, 
the DBT impact analysis action is available to all actual customers already. The bidirectional glossary sync action will be released soon. And we'll also have some more improvements planned for this. So for example, on the DBT impact analysis, bringing in more context. So what are the terms and ownership associated with all of the downstream assets that were changed? Potentially also opening PRs so that you can synchronize those DBT schema YAML files with the changes that happen in Data Hub, and then maybe expanding beyond just DBT and the glossary into things like, say, LookML. So exciting stuff. As always, please let me know if you have any feedback on this stuff. I'd love to hear it.